So I'm changing a bit topic somehow, but I'm still remaining in the area of students. Well, but my students, so to speak, are primary school children. And I just want to connect to the previous talks, also in another manner with Chad that was talking about context. And apart from stressing it on the slides, what I want to say is that also the concept of motivation changes a context to the context. So let me give a brief and better understanding of what I mean here. Primary school is our co-design context, and therefore we go with learners, right? And the fact that we go with learners make us have another yet, yet another perspective on engagement, which according to the literature of learning can be framed in different manners. The first is about behaviors, right? You want to achieve engagement in terms of behavior and you observe engagement in terms of behavior. The other dimension of engagement is emotions, right, of which we have been talking about today. And the other is social engagement, okay? And there are many others. With primary school children, the first three dimensions are those mostly considered. So we are going to consider them, and we will see them in the course of this talk. So let's, let just me show now how we intend to co-design with children so as to elicit three, these three dimensions of engagement. So the ingredients first of our co-design work come. The first ingredient is clearly co-design, but co-design with whom? With children. And of what we care about co-design is how to co-design with children. Okay, so that's exactly what we have been looking for in the literature, namely techniques for conceptualizing, developing, and evaluating low fidelity prototypes. And in case we couldn't find them for the prototype at hand, which are games, we created them, adapting them from the literature. The second main ingredient, since we want to have social engagement in schools, is how to foster cooperation, okay? And how to foster cooperation at the class level and at the group level. Now, another important factor that comes from the context, in, at least in the Italian context, is that children in the class are really different, okay? We have percentages of children that are 30% Sophonius, 30% come from an area of Italy, and that has an impact, and the other 30% is really local, so to speak, okay? So that's the situation. And they are really different in terms of learning skills and social skills besides cultures, which I have been hearing often and often during these presentations. So what we are taking then are cooperative learning strategies, rules, and roles, so as to foster hmm, social engagement within groups and the class. Third ingredient, and then I'm over with ingredients, are uh, to foster positive, not just emotions, but achievement emotions. Okay, those leading to success. For motivating students, there is quite a little to also in the area of learning about that achievement emotions foster intrinsic motivations. And what we did is to create a game like school context, and we will see that. After the ingredients, we have to put the ingredients to together and to create the recipe with the ingredients, right? So how to proceed from top to bottom in order to reach our goals. And in that case, again, we start, context mattered a lot because we had to work with different stakeholders. So educational psychologists and pedagogy experts, as well as teachers, okay? Because each teacher would know their class. So we wanted to embark them there in creating the protocols for working with school classes, with our ingredients. Okay, it's a long story, so I will just cut short on the protocol and move on to the products of the recipe. So what did in the end came out of these recipes? So I'm showing you a journey through two main products. The first is a shorter term study, which we ran in 2013, uh, sorry. And it is in the paper, right? So I'm just going quickly to this part because if you want to know more about the data analysis, whatever, they are there in the paper. 
What I just want to focus on now is how we made the transition for this shorter study to the longer version of the study, okay? So that's the idea. We are cooking two things, and these two things are, have the same goals, but they are different. And again, context matter, okay? So let's go with the shorter term study, with small one. And let's see the study design very briefly. We again chopped the activity into missions with clear goals. Each mission has its specific challenges. I'm going to low. And then in the end, what we produce are paper-based prototypes of games. And working with children in groups as participatory design will tell you how to do that, okay? And then the paper-based prototypes was turned into middle fidelity prototype, namely videos, in order to show how to interact with the games. And these were turned into app games by university students. Okay, so this work has been already. And by the way, there were small evaluation cycles interleaved with design cycles during this life cycle of these products. Okay, so far so good. This is for the outputs. So these are the results of the study in terms of the developed, quote, gains, okay? But there is another interesting corner uh, that we took into account. That is, okay, we went into schools. We took away times from children. And how did the activity really a engage children in terms of social and then uh, behavioral and uh, emotional engagement, okay? That was the other perspective we had on the study, not just the output of it. And, well, we were lucky, so we had positive results for performance engagement with respect to challenges, and the same goes for cooperation and positive emotions, okay? But we had also some important observations to track, and that is the, the, fact, the feeling of children and teachers alike, the time was too short, okay? So fee, uh, children felt under pressure and felt that they couldn't express themselves well. The other important aspect has to do with the fact that we had to be, according to participatory design, one uh, game designer per group, okay, of children. Now, this is not feasible as soon as I go to the longer term study if I want to extend the time, because human resources will not be sufficient, at least where I work. So we try to cope with these constraints to enlarge, imagine to enlarge the clock, enlarge the time, have a shorter term intervention so as to allow all children to express themselves, and at the same time trying to reduce the presence of the game designers to the class and not to the groups. Okay, so these were the two challenges and still maintaining the same levels of cooperation and emotions. So these are three challenges actually, right? So we go ahead very quickly. What we did was to study the protocols again, revise it again and think of the role of teachers. I'm just skidding through the slide because I'm late. Then the game design expert was one for the entire class. Okay, for us was gathered into groups and the game design expert was giving feedback at specific point during the design process, okay? We return on that. And then we had an important person there that is a passive observer and we had to have a passive observer trained into clinical psychology because we had children with special needs, okay? So she was trained to observe children along different dimensions in particular for special needs with respect to cooperation. That's it. Let's go now across how we did gamification now because so far we didn't see that, right? So what's the use of gamification in such a cool design context for making everybody be happy and work together? Hmm? So we had, as said, cooperative learning strategies, rules, and rules for making everybody work together in group and making every voice really heard. The point is that as soon as you do that in a short activity, it's a bit clearer how to pass on those rules. Hmm? Uh, the point is that you want to teach now the rules, which is different in a longer term activity. So we went to on to creating gamified objects that will allow children to identify the rules that they had to use at specific points and identify the roles they had in the co-design, okay? And then we also uh, co-design tasks, so the task we were doing 
every day at school. We are so gamified so as to be presented as mission, but also visualize as missions and challenges. So we also gamify the environment. So I'm focusing the three things here very briefly. The usual progression map, and let me spend some words, divided into missions, itself divided into challenges, each for their own group. And then we had coins as contingent completion rewards for challenges. But look, coins are not just given like that. At the end of a mission, children that co-design their piece of work go to the shop and they can use the coins in order to do what? In order to buy prototypes, objects that they can use in their mission the day after. Okay? So, but out to the side above those things is a game by means of other game-like objects. So this is the important point. I have cooperative learning rules and rules, and I want everybody to work in group. How can I do that? Okay, rules. But how can I make clear the rules? Such things could help, okay? Signaling this, palettes for voting opinions, things like that to make the rules clear and fun. Okay, so let's go ahead very briefly. Too many slides, sorry. And now let's go to the design of the study. Now I've explained a bit the material we use in the study. And we had a set mission. In the first mission, what we were doing were getting a training on roles and exploring the gamified material, okay? And creating the batch for the group. Big applause at the end, as usual. Second mission, the real prototyping activities start uh, at school. And they, we fragmented, we really thought a lot about how to fragment the game design document into manageable pieces for children. Mm, so that in the end, we could create a single game design document out of those fragments. So here comes the first fragment, which is the game idea. Plus the prototyping part, here was for the avatar. Each child would create his or her own avatar, individual work here. Okay, uh, third missions, groups are split in pairs. Each works on a game level, again, document plus prototyping. Same kind of uh, structure. Four mission, groups are rejoined, jointly revising and continuing game levels. Again, documentation, prototyping. The fifth mission, which is the last one, a school, uh, groups are together and assemble levels and the passage conditions in between the level on a given form in A0 with structured information every time. And then rehearse the presentation of the game prototype in view of coming to university and uh, giving a presentation going through a gallery tour, which is typical of cooperative learning for evaluating other works, with a final game prototypes, a game design document with color coding for structures, and in the end, they were also doing the evaluation of other groups' work with the usual sticky noting methods, and also with voting what is the best game prototypes of other groups. Okay, so we collected quite some data there. Okay, briefly, very briefly, with the types of data we collected, okay? So we collected data for the gamified material, that is the behavior of children with the material. This is only observation of the passive observer, okay? And then we also collected data concerning emotions, so whether they liked it or not. And these are the passive observers observation and also data collected from children. Moreover, we also, again, have collected data concerning the co-design activity itself in terms of behavior, cooperation with a pre-post design with sociograms and emotions. Now, here we used a, a survey which was developed in a university in Italy for positive emotion distinguished in types. Result, shop. The shop was the preferred gamified material, which says something about rewards. So they liked the idea of rewards as soon as they could use it in the game prototype development. Okay? And it's unclear, this picture, I'm sorry, this says that in general, positive emotions were 
more than negative emotion across missions, and there is not a linear preference among missions. So it's not that mission one is the top and mission two is the second, but mission one, the mission three, etc. So we have still to speculate about that. So that's it. So it's a number of people that we involved in this work, including industrial designers for producing the material to use at school, and that's it. So I made it. Thank you.